Um, and this idea of having the workshop is part mm -hmm. of our mission of at the same time providing the support for the artist. Um, gotcha. So yeah. yeah, I immediately uh, thought about you when I was thinking mm -hmm. about social media in dance and for professional dancers. Um, because yeah, yeah, everyone thinks that they know how to use social media properly or in a professional way. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's not true. So the, this workshop that is like an informal workshop, um, mm -hmm. but the aim is to explain that you need to follow um, some tips or some rules or some like key uh, points mm -hmm. to have a strong online presence and to promote your work on social media in a more like effective and engaging way. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, so my, my idea, um, if you are happy with that, is to go through like two, three key ideas around social yeah. media and dance. Uh, mm -hmm. And then maybe we can like uh, think together about like four uh, rules yeah. uh, for a good social media campaign, for example, if you are a dancer. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's my idea. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, I have some, um, like I wrote down kind of three different areas that are like, the ones that if you do that, it's like the whole kind of package thing. It's kind of like when I spoke to you guys, um, similar things to what I said, like about a plan and interacting with people and branding and stuff. So I can talk a little bit about that if you like. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the first thing, um, is that I would like you to, to introduce yourself, um, just a little bit, uh, and then yeah. we go and we move forward to the workshop and the conversation. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so my name is Eris. I am currently studying my master's for music therapy, but I did my undergraduate degree in dance and in voice. Um, yeah. And I kind of still work professionally in dance as much as possible. Um, it's not my main field at the moment, but if the work comes about, I still love to work in that area. Um, and then a, another side of my work is social media. So I do kind of management for different artists or help them create plans, have consultations, um, kind of different areas, just kind of where it's needed. Usually it started with people close to me in my circle reaching out to get tips and then it's just kind of expanded into fully helping them with maybe their own companies now they're setting up or different organizations. So yeah, so that's kind of all of my little areas, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And yeah, this, this workshop is about social media uh, for dance artists. So in your opinion, uh, why is it so important for a dance artist to know how to use social media? I think to, like in today's world, a huge amount of your work, if it's, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but it will come from social media. So even I learned that so much with lockdown and the pandemic, any work I got after, it was all through social media because nothing else was happening. There was no way to meet people in person or like meet somebody at university or a friend, even a friend for coffee, it wasn't happening. So it was all through social media. So I got a number of big enough jobs and it was all just through somebody found me on Instagram because I had done certain tags or I had popped up certain things and they were offering me a job or a chance to just like audition for a job maybe maybe it's not like straight away a job but it's a connection and even if some of them didn't work it was like I still then got to know that person and they've reached out since and said actually we have something that might work now so I think it's just in today's world you have to have it because it's a huge it's like your resume it's it is what like it shows people in two seconds what you can give or who you are and that's kind of how people might look look for somebody to work with like before they even do auditions sometimes or you know put an open call out sometimes they'll say I'll have a look at who I know online first and see if there's anyone before I even need to go do an open call and I think since also the pandemic there's going to be less open calls because it's so hard to get people into one space. So it's like, this is the time now, if you want to build it, to, to use social media to your advantage because it's, everyone can still have it and it still works no matter what's happening in the world. So yeah. Yeah, true. And, and in terms of like 
um, using social media for like a resume. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to start talking about branding um, mm -hmm. and about this topic, and then maybe we can establish some connection with some like social media platforms, how we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think when I think of if you're using, so some your social media it can be for personal, which some people just like that and some of your work on it. Or you can decide that, okay, I'm going to try and make this all of my work and exactly where people see my work. And that's when you would have to think of branding. When it's more personal, it's not so much a huge factor because you, you can still see that it's both on there. But if someone goes onto your page and it's like, okay, this is your work. This is just for your art that's when you need to have a brand. And a brand doesn't need to be like a big, it's a scary term, it sounds like, yeah. you know, like, oh my God, I have to be a huge, I have to have a brand. But no, it just means like, your everything needs to look cohesive or it just needs to be you in one page. It shouldn't be like 10 sides of your personality. Let it be every, you know, it's a package. So it's like, if I went on and I looked at your first three posts, I should know who you are, what you do, and what you give to me. I shouldn't need to scroll to maybe like the 20th post before I see, oh, this is who you are, or oh, this is what you look like, or oh, this is what you think. Like this is your opinion on something. If it's important to you, make sure it's seen like always. So keep it cohesive, keep it together. That's all it means by brand. And another thing for social media, it is visual. So it's a, it's a visual art form in a way. So I think also it's important to keep it cohesive in how it looks so if it's maybe every time you have a photo you use the same filter if you use filters you don't even have to use a filter or like keep it you know keep it minimal don't like over edit things just like keep it just together so it's not like one photo is like really edited and like super bright if the rest of your things are like more minimal you know like just keep it so it's like Nothing overly stands out over anything else. Have it all nice and together. It should look like a whole piece. Like it should look nice to look at as a whole thing and then as individual photos or videos. So it's like when you go on Instagram, let's say, they show maybe like nine photos, probably the first nine in the grid if you just have the screen open. So that first nine should always look together. It's going to change as you keep posting, but every time you post, it should add to what it still looks like so that it's still neat and clean and looks like you as much as possible. So I think that's the big one about brands. Just make sure you are seen always on your page. Don't, because nobody's going to search for it, unfortunately, because someone else is going to have that. So they'll just use that person because they already got the information without having to, you know, they spent two minutes on one page. They didn't have to spend 10 minutes searching for what they wanted. So give them as much as you, as you can in your brand to start off with, I think is really important. Yeah. Great. And about like the, the copy and the way that you communicate with your followers, um, mm -hmm. what do you think that it's like the most like engaging way to interact with your followers? Uh, while you keep your branding because we think about brand as something only like in images and it's really important but but it has to be connected with what you write or the way that you write um, mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about copywriting for social mm -hmm. media yeah so I think um, yeah in terms of like connecting with people I think you should probably in your captions let's say when you're talking speaking it should never be too formal because at the end of the day it's it is just social media you don't it's like we're all just people behind the screen you don't need to pretend it's a huge you know giant company if that's not what you are just show them that you're a person so just like the captions don't need to be anything that's like really formal it should be simple simple terms that people can read and enjoy and it says something and also i think it's important to often have something people can interact with in your caption so a question maybe or like yes something so they can come they feel like they should comment because if you don't have that you you will just get people scrolling past because it's what we all do but if you ask a question 
like if it's about a performance and then you could you know has anyone been to this performance space before has anyone you know like what type of genre of dance do you all enjoy to watch to perform simple things but like related to the image and then I think once people start to interact always interact back as much as possible obviously if it's like a huge amount you can't always but you know just have little moments that people are like oh there is a person behind the screen and they're talking to everyone and then I think for Instagram which is the one that's just I guess the biggest so I, so I talk about it the most the stories also are just like crucial and probably the most important part like even before having main posts having your story because people look at stories so much and there is also built in ways to interact on a story so like make up one of the polls or make a question box and people will interact and then it's yeah it's just showing that you're behind it and it's not just like a robot like who's controlling this page that's all yeah yeah and i think that's really important <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and people care about that because they'll keep following you if they if they're like oh you responded to me or you interacted with me you know and then if, even if you have a performance coming up and you are announcing dates or something and someone interacts they're more likely to come if you're like talking to them and they're like oh you really do want me there it's not just you know anyone can come come on please 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 i'm begging people you know as many people as possible it's like if you reach out to a few people it feels like oh well, like they you know i would definitely i'll go and see it because like you've commented back a few times and we've talked about things you know and like we're similar or i connected with you a lot through this yeah that's just important for if you are trying to build it it's just like connect with the people and they'll stay with you yeah thank you yeah. um so yeah i would like to know like another topic um, mm -hmm. that you have uh, in mind and that you can share. Um, yeah. So talk about branding um, mm -hmm. for social media and copywriting. And the next one is? So I had another one that I was going to say was like to have an organized plan. So before you start anything or if you decide to change your brand or if you're just cleaning it up and you're ready to make it maybe, you know, a professional page, just to have a plan so have a way maybe a schedule like of days you're going to post what times you're going to post maybe what you're going to post so a lot of people that i've seen kind of build a following they have a certain pattern so they might post a photo a video a photo and that's their weekly plan and they do it each time and then it kind of helps everything because then when you go onto their page it also looks really together because it's always a photo, a video, a photo. So it helps with their branding also because it looks now like, oh, they have a plan. They post often. I know what I'm going to get because they've been doing it for weeks like that. So I'm not questioning. I wonder when they, you know, I wonder will I ever see performance footage? It's like, well, if you look back, they post performance footage every Wednesday. So like people will look forward to that. So it's like if you show them, I have a schedule, this is what you get from my page. It's just more enticing to stay. So it's kind of a level of organization of having, you know, it doesn't need to be like really scheduled because sometimes you lose the enjoyment. Yeah. If you're just following like a timetable, it's yeah. not enjoyable. Like obviously you can still post whenever you want. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's your page at the end of the day, but I think it definitely helps to kind of, know your audience so even like it's really important to change your page to a business account if it's not one so that you can see the analytics so like that's a huge like or see the insights i think they call it now on instagram so it's like um then at least you know the times that people are active the countries they're from what the you know did they interact loads with your videos or your pictures so then you can build your schedule and your time frames around that. And even the people who I work with, a lot of the times they'll ask me to make a schedule for them. And I'll always say, if you miss a day of your schedule, it doesn't mean like, damn, I've ruined the pattern now. I have to, you know, like I didn't post today at 3 p.m. What am I going to do? It's like, it doesn't matter. The schedule should be like a loose idea of 
in the ideal world, I'll post um, these things at these times. But if I don't, it's totally fine. And I can post on Sunday, even though I never post on Sunday, but it's fine. Like it's not the end of the world. It just helps to build it if it's kind of a little bit scheduled. So I think like ideally when you're starting, maybe even just say, okay, even if it's not a schedule that I have written out like a timetable, it's like, I'm going to aim to post one photo and one video every week just to have small goals that it's not just like, oh, I forgot to post for two weeks. Because then of course, people aren't going to stick around because they're going to be like, oh, you're not active. You're not, you know, it's like people are on social media to see social media. So you have to give them content for them to stay. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just how it kind of is. And then for stories, I always say, if you're thinking schedule to keep it, that's the side that you will do more informal. So like, I would never have a schedule for stories. I would just, you post freely if you're like in rehearsals, if you're anything, watching a dance film, watching, you know, like it's the personal side of it. So people should really see you and whatever you want to show them on your story. It doesn't need to be at all just like dance footage or even just like in a rehearsal. It can just be like what you're eating. You know, it's normal stories because people still want, I think, the human side of it. It's like the interactions again, it kind of, it all comes together. Like, so it's kind of like people want to see who you are. So like be, yeah. So be casual on your story and then have a kind of schedule for your main grid is what I would always say. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have like any tip for like organizing that content? Because for example, I was thinking that if, if I'm having a performance, I will like spend Mm -hmm. all my followers with loads of content, like teasers, um, Mm -hmm. loads of pictures from the performance. But then maybe uh, after three weeks, I don't have content or or maybe I think that is not relevant anymore. Um, So do you have like any tip to organize the content uh, through Mm -hmm. a month or across like a longer period of time? Yeah, I think you should always try let's say if it's something like that, so like it always happens to anyone who's an artist, you'll have a big performance. So you want to post about it or you'll have something you did a project you worked on. I think it's really important to save, hold back a tiny bit because I think we can get excited and like share, 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 share. And then even you can tell it starts to get less interactions because people have already seen it. As much as we're excited about it, people aren't going to care as much. So like if you show them like one really good video, there's a better chance that they'll really interact with that and really enjoy it. Then if you post another video in two days, they're going to be like, oh, I kind of saw what they're talking about. You know, so it's like hold, holding back slightly more than we think. Still post, you know, like a good amount, but keep some because then in like a month when you have no content, you could put out a video and people will interact again because it's been long enough that they're they're ready to watch it again. I think like two weeks is probably like the time scale that people will like not remember it for, but like if you post a video and then post another one in two weeks, people will interact again. I think within a week, people are like, I already saw it this week. And even like the second week, it's like, still kind of recently i think once it goes past two weeks you can repost you know you can do loads more again on the same topic it's just spreading it out and making sure that even if your work starts to get quiet you've saved things that people haven't seen and you're still giving them options or things you know things to see basically yeah yeah great and i don't know if you have like any other topic um, that we can talk about? Mm, I think my last one was kind of with the business page. It was just to know your audience. So it's the same. So definitely turn it into a business page if it's not already. And then maybe take some time to like learn what the analytics or the insights on Instagram mean or on Facebook or wherever your platform is going to be because it gives you a lot on the people which I don't know if people love that or hate that, but it does. So like the information is there. So use it to your advantage because they tell you the age groups, they tell you what posts they interact with. They tell you, you know, a huge amount of information that you can use. 
So it's like, you're not going to put a video up at 1 PM. If it says in your insights, your audience is the most active at 8 PM. So it's just learning that like to fit everything together, it needs to suit your audience because they're who's going to watch it or even like what country they're from. Then you can see the language of your captions. Maybe, you know, if you have a huge American audience, you're not going to post your captions in a language they don't understand if you want to reach them. And if it's not something, if it's a performance that's happening in Italy and you want to reach, obviously you're not going to be posting, you know, you might post it in Italian or you might do it to, so it's just kind of making sure you know who your audience is because then it just captures them much better. So keep it specific. So it's not a waste of your energy or a waste of, you know, you want your post to make, you know, to reach its goal. If, if you have an aim towards posting it or a reason, don't let it slip away. So just do everything you can to make it as beneficial as possible for you. Yeah. So I think they're kind of the main ones though. So it's like being, having a kind of a schedule, interacting with people, branding, and then like knowing your audience. They're kind of four areas that, and they all tie in together. But it's just to know them is, I think, key. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, the last question that I have, I only have like one question um, mm -hmm. that is about like increasing your online community um, through social media. Um, so do you have like any tips um, for that, like for starting conversations, how we should start conversations on social media? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, because I think the biggest way to build your audience is to interact with others because they stick around. And ideally, then you would have interactions with people who are similar to you. So dance artists, dance companies, organizations, anything. And I think the best way to do that is also to remember that if you're not friends with them on Instagram, so if they don't follow you and like, if you don't basically both follow each other, your message will get lost in their requested messages or, you know, like there's a section, it won't come up for them straight away. So I think it's important to remember that because sometimes if we start to message them before we've ever interacted with them, they might not see it. I think the best way to do things like that is to interact. Like if they have a story up and they have a question box, ask a question. Even if you don't have a question, ask a question. You know what I mean? Like go out of your way to make yourself seem like you're really interested. If you're like, I really want to work with that company or I just really want to talk to that company. Make sure, okay, then every time that company posts, I'm going to like their posts. I might leave a comment if something stands out to me. If they have interactions on their stories, I'll interact with them. And then they'll start to see your name. So then even if it is a case of like, okay, then I'll message them and it still might go into the request messages, but they've seen your name interacting with them. So they're probably more likely to be like, oh yeah, yeah, she's, you know, she's been on the story loads actually. Let me, let me see what she's talking about. So I think it's just kind of um, like be clever about it. Not, don't be fake about it obviously, but like, it's like the question thing. It's like, even if you don't have a question, maybe you just ask one because it looks like you're interested and like, you'll always get something out of asking a question. If you know, like you find something that you're interested in, but I think, yeah. So the interactions just make sure that they, because a like probably wouldn't be enough to get someone's not attention, but to connect with them. If you want a proper connection with someone, it needs to be a, a few comments, a few interactions. And then you might see that, oh, they followed because they see you're super active. And you, if you followed kind of the four things that we were talking about earlier, and they go to look at your page from all your likes and your comments, they'll see, oh, I can totally see her brand. She's a dance artist as well. This is what she does. This is why she's interacting with us. Let me follow her because, you know, we can see her page is similar to our page. So it's, that's why the whole image of your page is super important because if you want to interact with people and they come to your page, They'll, they'll see it for two seconds, really. They're not going to stay for too long. And then they should be able to see, okay, this is why I'm going to follow them. And then I think for like internally, so that's kind of like external if you want, if you want to like communicate with people. But then let's say your 
followers already are the internal ones. So you have to do the same with them. So you have to communicate back with them because they're doing to you what you're going to do to the other people. Like they're commenting to see if you will interact with them. So it's a chain. So like make sure you're doing it both ways. So do it to the people who are interacting with you and then interact with other people who you may want to work with or interact with. Yeah. That's, I think that's it's, really important because sometimes we forget about ourselves. So we are trying to mm -hmm. invest um, in other stakeholders and we forget about the connections that maybe mm -hmm. we already have with us. So yeah. I just have one last question um, yeah. that is, is about like the other platforms. So I, I also think that Instagram is perfect for dance. Uh, because yeah. it, it has everything and opens the old possibilities to engage, to show, to post. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, but, but in your opinion, like what should we do as dance artists um, with other social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, uh, or even LinkedIn? Um, mm -hmm. Are they important? Uh, should we give the same value as we give to Instagram as well? Um, I think... I would say definitely, like personally, I mean, like I don't have all the right answers, but it's from what I've seen work. I definitely wouldn't invest the same amount of time, but I would have enough on them that you can link them to your Instagram. So like if it's a LinkedIn, a Facebook, anything, a Twitter, like usually Facebook and Twitter go well with Instagram. So like to have something on them that it's similar, like if they went to them from your Instagram, they would see that you're active, but even if it's similar content to Instagram, I think it's okay. So if your Facebook posts are just like reposts from your Instagram, and like, I think that's fine. Even if it's the same content, it still means people can see, oh cool, you just have a Facebook platform as well. That's cool, I might like it, I might not. It's not essential, but at least you're like, you have a presence. Yeah, and you so can think, like, have enough. Different, yeah, you can reach different people from that. Exactly. Platform. Yeah. So like realistically, if someone sees your Instagram post, they might not go to your Facebook. It might be a whole different age group of people on Facebook. Number one is usually the big one. So they're going to get to see your Instagram post if they don't have Instagram or if they just aren't on it as much. So I think having both, like if you're going to put work into Instagram, use it to your advantage and like use it well. You don't have to do it again for Facebook. Just use the same things. Like don't make the work because at the, like, at the end of the day, you're a dance artist. You, you're not trying to be an influencer on Instagram. So like, don't put all of your creative ability into making Instagrams all day or worrying about Instagram. It's just a tool, so use it as a tool. So don't waste too much time on like, okay, I have to make Facebook content and Instagram content. Like use it to your advantage. Okay, I have a really good Instagram page, so I'll just link it to my Facebook. I'll link it to my Twitter. I think that's the best way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you have like anything else that you would like to add. I think that's kind of it. I think just kind of being organized and just like making sure that you kind of follow not those steps, but just that everything is together and it's just think of it as your resume and like make sure it shows you and also don't overcomplicate it. Because at the end of the day, it's not life or death. It's just pictures and videos on, you know, a platform. It, it will help you, but it's not, there's no need to be super stressed over it. Like do what you can with it and have a schedule maybe. But if it stresses you out too much and you still want it to be casual, let it be casual, but just follow maybe similar things you put up. So even if you don't want to take everything, like schedule, branding, everything, like just take one because it will still make the page look good. I think it's just having, keeping it kind of together. It's more about like they can see you when they're there. That's the most important part. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no worries.